Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's five-month-old son Archie is at risk of blowing out on the 12-hour flight to Cape Town, South Africa, for the Sussex's first overseas tour as a family of three, an expert has warned. The tot is set to join his royal parents when they embark on a 10-day tour of Southern Africa on September 23. Archie took his first flight this summer to a visa where the family celebrated the Duchess of Sussex's 38th birthday before flying to Nice a week later for a short stay at Singerelt in John's Villa. But the baby's upcoming private jet journey to the Rainbow Nation's port city will be nearly six times longer than the flights he has taken in the past. Baby sleep expert and reflux specialist Alison Scott Wright said Harry, 35, and his wife should be prepared for the possibility of their baby bloating. Cabin pressure and the high altitude can pose challenges to even the most frequent flyers and babies and young children are no exception. She told Express.co.uk, if you have a water bottle on a plane it blows out and there is the same effect on our digestive system. You cannot prevent that? It happens to all of us. There's nothing you can do so it might be a bit tricky. For a couple of days there might be spit-ups or vomits. As well as bloating passengers can also experience cramping and irregular digestion after a 12-hour flight. M. Scott Wright, author of the sensational Baby Sleep Plan, is known as the magic sleep fairy to her readers. The UK-based expert advises parents to give their baby a probiotic in the days leading up to a long flight to to help boost the gut flora. She also said bringing baby Archie out for a photo opportunity should not be a problem if he has adapted well to his new environment. Buckingham Palace has not said if Harry and Meghan's son will attend any engagements in the developing country but he is expected to make an appearance on the tour. Having flown alongside her clients and their babies in the past, M. Scott Wright said her number one tip for parent is to not lose their cool if their tot kicks up a fuss. Don't panic when you're on a flight dealing with a baby because then the baby is going to get upset, she said. The best strategy is to stay calm, hold them and love them through it all. Don't react if the baby gets upset. The more you worry about it the worse the baby feels because they can feel the panic rising. I have clients who travel all over the world with young babies. I do say to them only travel if you have to and if you do travel the best thing you can do to allow the baby to adapt is to have a routine and stick to it. It makes a big difference if the baby knows the difference between night and day from the start. She said the couple's decision to bring Archie on the long flight would have raised some eyebrows back in the day but is no longer a huge deal in modern society. It's what people do these days and it's not extreme in today's society but the acceptable norm, she said. But if you were to ask my mother she would say what do you mean traveling with a baby? Just don't take them. During the tour Meghan, Archie and the family's nanny will be based in South Africa while the Duke of Sussex will travel to neighboring countries. Harry is said to visit Botswana, Malawi and Angola where he will visit a number of charities. The couple's visit will focus heavily on community initiatives and shine a spotlight on groups helping vulnerable children. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry will arrive in South Africa with baby Archie on Monday for their first royal tour as a family. The Sussexes have faced fierce scrutiny in recent weeks for what critics claim is hypocritical behavior. A royal commentator has said they could use baby Archie to win back public favor while in Africa. Meghan Markle, 38 and Prince Harry, 35, have been fiercely protective of their son Archie Harrison since his birth on May 6. The four-month-old has been kept out of the public eye and even his christening was a closely guarded affair. Meghan and Harry's bid for privacy has been condemned by critics who claim their celebrity status and public income means they should be more open. A royal commentator has claimed next week's Africa tour could be the perfect chance for them to properly introduce Archie to the world. The Sussexes will arrive in South Africa tomorrow for a 10-day royal tour. Meghan, Harry and Archie will spend the first few days together in South Africa before Harry jets off for solo visits to Botswana, Angola, and Malawi. They will reunite in Johannesburg for the last two days of the tour. Royal fans hope the Africa trip will be the first time little Archie is seen out and about with his parents in an official capacity.
Meghan has a packed schedule of royal engagements throughout the tour but it is expected that Archie will join her for some of them. Royal expert and editor-in-chief of Majesty magazine, Ingrid Seward, claims showing Archie to the public at this juncture would be a savvy PR move. M. Seward told The Telegraph, from a public relations point of view the Duke and Duchess really do need to show the people Archie. She added, he is the best ticket they have got for getting people to re-fall in love with them. M. Seward claims taking Archie all the way to keep him under wraps would be pointless. She said, people are very susceptible to images of children. I don't see the point of hauling him all the way there only to keep him under wraps. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex further cemented their celebrity image when they joined a host of A-listers from Mishianano's Glissy Rome wedding on Friday. Meghan and Harry were snapped among guests who included Ivanka Trump, James Corden, and Katy Perry. Meghan wore a striking black Valentino dress which sold out online after pictures of her wearing it emerged. The pair, who had left little Archie at home for the wedding, jetted back to the UK yesterday morning ahead of flying to Africa. Meghan and Harry both campaigned for environmental causes and were dealt flag for a string of private jets they used this summer. Little Archie will help make the first royal tour taken by Meghan Markle and Prince Harry as a family a little more lively. The family arrives into Cape Town on Monday morning to begin a visit to South Africa, while Harry is also set to head off alone to Botswana, Angola and Malawi before being reunited with Meghan and their son. They are very much looking forward to their arrival in Africa tomorrow on their first official tour as a family, a palace source said on Sunday. Africa holds a very special place in the Duke's heart and he's looking forward to sharing South Africa with the Duchess and their son. The program, drawn up alongside the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and the couple's main charities or patronages, will truly demonstrate the modern UK-Africa partnership in action. It's a busy program, which is four countries in ten days. And obviously, we have an extra special small passenger to make things a little more lively. Nigel Casey, the British High Commissioner for South Africa, added at a briefing in Cape Town, Visits like this play an important part in celebrating, sustaining and renewing what is a dynamic, modern relationship between the UK and South Africa. There are around 380 media accredited throughout the tour across the four countries. And excitement is growing for Harry, who has visited often, and particularly for Meghan, who is heading to the country for the first time. The couple begins the public element of their tour with a visit to a township in Cape Town where they will receive a welcome and visit workshop that teaches kids about their rights, and self-defense and provides female empowerment training to young girls. The Duke and Duchess will also go on a short walkabout, enabling them to meet some of the local community for the first time. They are also expected to make some opening remarks. Young brown girls like myself can say somebody has done it. It can be done, says Matsi Modis who will spend time with the Duchess of Sussex at a gathering of female entrepreneurs on Wednesday. She believes Meghan is influencing the world order. She shows the world is changing and evolving that there is a place like brown children and women like myself in society. That's one thing that really touched me. I can really relate to her. On Tuesday, part of the day will be spent on the beach where the couple will meet the coaches and mentors from mental health organization Waves for Change, who help build confidence and mental well-being among young people ages 11 to 14 from disadvantaged areas. We are very lucky to bring the kids into the natural environment into the ocean and the beach, which really gives their minds and bodies a break from the communities they are living in where they are constantly exposed to stress and trauma and challenges like poverty and violence. Ash Heath, training and partnerships manager, tells people. And the beach is almost an opposite space. An opportunity to step away from all of that. She praises the couple as two people who are such positive mental health champions supporting our program and mental health in general. It is so important that people like the Sussexes are promoting healthy mental well-being. Even just the fact that they are talking about it's huge and valuable. On Wednesday, Megan who is keen to promote female entrepreneurs, will have a solo engagement with women making headway as CEOs and founders of tech businesses. Modis, 
founder of skills training organization Simo Diza and CEO in FA, says, I don't want to have tea with the royals for the sake of having tea with the royals. She wants to find out how Meghan can help them. I'm not having tea with a princess, I'm actually having tea with somebody who can be a great advocate for empowering entrepreneurs. And Nati Yamuseji, co-founder of Wamub and Wameng, which delivers more programs to get women and girls into engineering and technology, tells people, her visit in the context of a country that's really grappling with the challenges with the way we treat women is coming at an opportune time. Her focus is broadly around women empowerment and also the education of women. We both share a passion for the promotion of women entrepreneurs and how women can own their engineering industry. We may be kindred spirits in the room with her and find that is something that is amazing.